Hi everyone and welcome to the Predator WPA Men's Elbow World Championship held in Klagenfurt, Austria. And what a match we have for you now between two of the greatest of the game, Shane Van Boning and Albinushan from Austria. In the booth for commentating, former World Nine World Champion with me from England, Daryl Peach and myself, Benjamin Belhassen. This is a race to 10, winner breaks, WPA rules. And what a match we have here. Absolutely. Don't get much better than this. Both will be wanting to start off strong. Obviously, winner breaks, so I'd like to get straight out of the blocks. Yeah, it's a single elimination format. Now we are in stage two of this tournament. Lost 32 players. Two thirds of the field have already gone home. And actually, the, the loser is going to go home also. So, big pressure here, big match, race to 10. And Albinushan is playing in his hometown here. So, he might feel like he's going to play his heart out to try to win this match and the whole, and the whole thing. Cue ball was flying then. Almost got off the table. Yeah, jumped over the over the pack. And he got away with it. There we go. Wow. Yeah, a little bit fortunate there. Made a ball. Yeah. Thirteen. Pretty open table. The, uh, the layout looks funny, but... I think he could start... He could choose either solids or stripes, but... I think the seven ball is... It's gonna be a problem if he choose the solid, so he might get rid of it right now. If, it's, if he decides to go for solids. But I don't see any problems on the stripes. The 15 ball is passing the three ball. He can stop the 12 to play the 14 to the top right -hand corner pocket. So I think he would start 12 and 14. <clears throat> and then pick up the 15, which is all alone past the head string. The 11 ball is a kind of a problem though. It's a little bit of luck. I don't know if she passes the side pocket. Once you get rid of the 10, then it will be okay. Yeah, he didn't. He was, I think he was playing for the 10 there, you know, yeah. so that he could then play the 11 in the opposite corner, but didn't have the right angle. Yeah, so we're going to reassess back down. Try and just get a nice angle on the ten. What I think, with I, I think he has now. This looks better. Yeah, just going to probably bump. Personal preference, but just bump the one out the way. Well, he's leaving the eleven last. Yeah, so he really want to make sure to have the perfect angle on the ten. Yeah. Same, same sort of shot. Either bump the one out of the way or play for the 11 in the side. Plays for the 11 in the side. He got perfect on it, so... Yeah. That's... It's going to be the first break and run of this match, looks like. Yeah, and when I said you need to get out of the blocks quick. There it is. Got a little fortunate though on the first break, almost fly the cue ball off the table. Remember it was a 96 player invited field. Only a third remain for the last 32. Our sponsors and partners for this event are Predator Group. Ritworth Billiard, Billiard Sport Academy, Yes Minution, and Kamui Brand.
and the local support of Klagen for Tourism and the region of Corinthia. There we go, second rack. We're trying to get a little bit less airborne here. Then make a ball on break. You saw the orange 13 there tracking towards the side tracking towards the side but just got kicked out so unlike the last rack a little bit more work to be done here a few obstacles mm. mainly the 14 the 7 and the 1 yeah also the 5 is in trouble here the orange 5 So that's the problem when you have two balls, one ball of each group that is blocked, then you you have to go for a choice. Yeah, the 14 is really locked here if, if it goes for the stripes. But it will try to create an angle out of the nine to go directly into the problem right now. The earlier, the better. Mm. Yeah, it looks like it doesn't have the angle he wanted. Yeah, it looks pretty straight on the nine ball, so needs to reassess his options now. Maybe he could just play safe behind the 14, I don't know. Because it's, it's really in trouble here. I like that option though. Just gonna roll the 14 and try to get behind the 9. It's a good shot. I mean, it's a good containing. Container, yeah. yeah. I'm going to push that seven ball up into that. Nice. He should come in behind the two stripes. Try to force Albin to play one of those two. It's pretty rare to have a, a safety battle in eight ball. It's kind of really a chess play at the beginning of the game because of lots of balls, lots of traffic. Yeah, just looking if the five goes past the three into the side, it looks pretty tight to me that. Yeah. Yeah, he thinks it goes, so he's, if that goes, and I'd class that as a mistake from Alvin. Whoa! Really close here. That is my match, but a little too thin. Tough to save the 15 ball versus the two. Looks like, but nice. Good shot there. And I really want now to create an angle on the nine uh, as soon as he can to 
go into the 14. But still a lot of work to do there. He may even negotiate these three stripes down this end of the table and use the last one to actually bump into the 14 and the 1 and the 7, knowing that the 9 is there. Yeah. He has to have the perfect angle he, on, he the, does, uh, yeah. on the 11 to, to go there. Now he's looking just to come right under the underneath the nine ball and spin into the seven and the four. Yeah, because then the target is big. Obviously the difficult part is coming under the nine. Whoa, we hit it way hit it hard. Yeah, way too much pace. Yeah, I just felt if he comes underneath and nudge, nudges the 14 and pushes the one up towards the side, the 14 then goes in the corner, so. Mm -hmm. He almost made the eight on the side pocket. He did, yeah. <laughs> well, has he got an angle here to still get into them? He did. He has a jump. Just too much pace. Almost made it. It's a good effort. Well, that last little nudge there on the eight ball, I think has just made that five ball a little bit tricky. Yeah. If the five ball doesn't pass the eight, then uh, still okay. Didn't have that much time to take a decision though. That was really a good effort. I could draw two rails to catch the line of the six on the side maybe. playing just yeah. in right in behind the five and the seven, yeah. Yeah. Good shot there. Conservative. Conservative, but at the same time opening all three of his yeah. smart his solids that were a little bit tangled. And you have to call the shutter. It's not like nine ball where you could be afraid to let your opponent at the table again. There, it really has to make a, a a really great shot to to win that game. Obviously get rid of the five and the seven, one and the eight ball. Play in the seven first because it's because the one is below the seven. Mm. 
So, from a tricky layout, it's Shane Van Bonin that comes out on top to take a two rack lead, and he will be breaking next. I always thought when, when you're playing in a match where you expect it to be tight and close, it's the scrappy, scrappy racks that count the most sometimes. Yeah, and actually he broke dry and got away with it, so this is also not happening all the time. Yeah, what I mean by that is everybody talks about, oh yeah, did you see that? He ran seven racks, he ran eight racks. But sometimes it's those scrappy racks that get you the match, get you the win. Yeah. Just as important. Solid break there, one in the side. I think he made three. Made three balls, yeah. He had an extension to his, to his breaking cue. Ooh, and he, he doesn't do that in rotation game like nine ball or ten ball. Maybe it's to have a little more power. Yeah, a little bit more drive through the, yeah. through the pack. Yeah. And he got off his extension of his playing cue because the, the tables are pretty fast. And I think it's normally he uses a big extension on his cue stick to play. Yeah. And he got rid of it maybe because he wanted a lighter cue to, to have a better cue ball control on the fast table, I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, eight ball, you're not really moving the cue ball around the table too much. In fact, you want it's exactly what you don't want to be doing. So this one's really, I mean, everything was connected, so. Yep, all came from the break, really good break. And then just a matter of connecting these dots. So a super quick rack. That's another one on the board for Shane. Takes a 3 0 lead. Such a powerful break. It's just so hard to repeat that kind of break consistently. not really done that much wrong. Two break and runs from Shane and that scrappy rack in between. Mm. Well, I call it scrappy, it's more like tactical. Yeah. <laughs> so can he repeat that break? I'm sure he's 100% focused on that. That Def was a powerful one also. Definitely got through. The balls are open up nicely, but then looks like everything went on the right side of the table and to create some kind of uh, traffic there with five balls on the short rail. Yeah, the main thing is he made a ball, so he's in control, but you can see this rack far from over. A lot of work to do. Yeah, and first, to start then, can you so play the combination 310? Yeah, just for the viewers, you can play a solid onto a stripe or vice versa, very first shot after the break. So he could choose to play the 310 combination and go into the 11. 
if the angle's there, yeah. yeah, which is probably what he's looking at. He just doesn't want the three to come back out and sort of double kiss the, the cue ball, which, well, he's missed a... He's missed a 10. Probably looking at the, the yeah. breaking the balls up more than making the combination. Yeah, he hit it too thick, actually. But it didn't open every ball. I, I don't know if the seven ball passes on the side, which would be great for Albin. Maybe he could play it off the four. It's hard to tell from here. Yeah, it looks on. It's definitely the shot if it is. Yeah, that's what he called. Everything is open. So if he makes this shot, he had good chances to go through the rack. Yeah, okay. Okay, the four ball is giving him the one ball and the six. So what you have to do now is to get straight on the five, play the play the two, five, and then the four, one, six. And then will be a little work to do from the six to the eight, but still okay, I mean. The four ball is an important ball here because it really gives the line of the one to get rid of those two balls near the rack. Yeah, basically just make sure he finishes either, well, probably just low on the one ball. He wanted a little bit more angle so that he could come away from the rail. There you see, just slightly low on the one. side rail, float the cue ball up, let the spin do the work. And just like that, <laughs> Alvin gets one back. The crowd definitely appreciate that. <laughs> Obviously they are rooting for the, the local player. One of the only few players, two-time World Nine Ball champion. Yes, so we're just going to take a short break. We'll be right back. the better player will still win. It's Temple to win the title. He is your champion. You will champion. Champions.
Welcome back. Scoreline 3 1 Van Boning. But Albin gets his chance to break now. First time I see a player play from the from the side but not from the rear. Maybe he's gonna play on the he's gonna break. Wow, that was a powerful one. Square hit. Yeah, I really like that. Massive drive right through the pack. Look at that. Yeah, square hit. Square on, yep. Makes two balls, I think. Last ball roll in the 11. <laughs> yeah. Just made the situation tricky. And the one and the five looks, the combination looks dead. So maybe he used the, the six to create an angle on the four to bump the 11. That would be ideal. is dead so I don't think the seven ball passes in the side pocket where the ten is so he has a position play here and I try to go back and forth having the seven ball I think yeah very limited in what I can do well, now that he's finished short, it looks like he's going to have to play the three in the same pocket as the seven. Pretty thin cut, though. I think he has to play like pocket speed and... Yeah, I'm probably going to play with a touch of right and spin, just yeah. to make sure that middle pocket where he is, doesn't come into play. Just see the spin on that cue ball. It's just got perfect there. He's done his job. Crowd appreciating that one again. Nice control there from Albin. Yeah, and powerful break also from the side, but not from the rail. I think he put his bridge a little bit on the rail, I think. Yeah, it's like the, the back of his hand is, is yeah. touching the rail, but... It was bridging with the hand, but his, his hand, but... His fingers are on the bed of the yeah. table, yeah. This is pretty unusual. Yeah, maybe that's just how he, he feels more comfortable like that, maybe. Yeah. So even early on, you can tell the crowd, the local crowd, Albin, the local player. The crowd definitely on Albin's side, but for anyone who doesn't know, Shane wears Earring aids, and he switches them off when he plays, so he won't hear any of that anyway. Rack six. There you can see half and half off the side rail. Mm. Yeah, just lost the cue ball there. If you watch on this replay, just comes up over the top of the the front ball. Yeah, a little bit off. So he's breaking from the left, but he actually hits the front ball on the right. And it went to the corner, and then it got kicked. I mean, yeah, he's very unlucky to be kicked in, but when you do that, 
you're limiting your chances of making a ball. So to remember the rule, Van Boning has ball in hand behind the hair string and is forced to play towards the head, the head spot. He cannot play into the zone of the head string. Okay, he chose the solid. It looks like he chose the solid, but Oh, he changed his mind? Yeah, the problem is the, the 12, I think. The 6 and the 12. If you take the solid, you have to make sure to find a solution to get, to get rid of the 6. That's what he's looking at now. He's still not 100%, is he? Putting the ball down there. He moves it again. Yeah. When you find yourself in a, a kind of a rush there because of the shot clock also, so you don't have many many options and much time to make your mind. So now he has to find a solution for the six ball. Which is the only problem of the solids. Yeah, when, the th yeah, when the we get a chance to look at the six ball now. Yeah, the thing is, if he get rid of the seven ball now, then he could, playing the two, bump the twelve and play the five on the on the lower on the lower right. Yeah, and he always has the four ball, the purple four in the side as backup. Well, he's actually going, I think he's played the... I don't know what he's done there. Oh, oh yeah, the five, five ball passes. Oh, okay. That changes things. It looked like it didn't pass yeah. from on our monitor. Yeah, so he's just going to put the two and the six in the corner and the lower right and corner pocket, that's it. I didn't think the five ball did that, so... Got a little bit off angle here. That's still okay. A little more work to do, though. Maybe if the four passes in the bottom left, he would choose to, to take that pocket instead of the side. Yeah, that's just like that. The thing is, player of that level can easily and quickly adapt and change their mind. And this is a big point here. Because sometimes you you don't want to move your plans and stick with it and even if you miss position. So you have to change your plan, make decisions quickly. That's what he did. The event display the best equipment Predator Apex 9-foot tables with Predator lights, Arena, Arcadia Reserve cloth, Predator Arcos 2 bowls and Predator Aria racks. As a reminder, it's a single elimination, 32 players, race to 10. We have a multi-stream tables available on Cosm.com and the table coverage on the new Probidia TV YouTube channel. Feel free to subscribe. Wow, that was a big pop. And a big break, but still. Yeah, big pop, but no drop. 
Yeah, not one ball dropped. Wow. Powerful break. See the layout here. You can see if it, if it, if it goes so solid, then the 11 ball is a big problem blocking the, the top right corner pocket. The early you solve the problem, the better. He's going for the one on the side to try to get action in those balls. Maybe to go rail first into the 13. Yeah, that's what he did. And he got away with it because he has a shot on the 7, looks like. And I think the 3 ball is passing the 11. Yeah, it looks like the 3 goes past now. The 7 ball looks t too thin though. Yeah, Maybe it shows it's the 6 on the side. Yeah, I think so. He's losing control of the cue ball if he plays the 7. So maybe looking at playing the six in the side forced to go up table in between the the eight and the two oh he's, uh, he's elevating yeah makes the shot tougher <coughs> And I think Van Boning didn't expect to to play so quick. No, no, it's, I mean, it does make the shot quicker, but that's still a bit of a, bit of a surprise. Well, a lot of a surprise, actually. Try to get action into the six, maybe to free the ten here. Good shot. He knew that the twelve ball was the middle, but it, it did. It didn't get much travel after mm. bumping into the six, so this is a thin one. Cue ball on the move now. Yeah, this is a thin cut. It will, it will be, it will be have natural shape on the 15, I think, hitting the the nine. Good shot there. So we have 10, 13, nine, and 15. And Albinusian must be upset with this miss on the six ball on the side. Is it what? Not really a, a tough shot. <coughs> Much more a medium shot, which you don't expect player of that level to miss. Yeah, and Shane made light work of it after after the mistake from Albin. Mm. Taking a three-game lead now. He's gone half the way. Yeah, halfway there with a three-rack lead and breaking, obviously, in this winner-breaks format.
so more of a cut on that break. But it was so powerful that the but the balls like spread like nicely. Yeah, a lot of movement. See again, this, the front ball was the six ball. It was tracking towards that side pocket and just got kicked. But made a random ball in the corner pocket. Okay, the solids look. Yeah, because of the four ball yeah. blocking the 10, the solids look the better. Yeah, three ball after this one to open the one and two into the same corner. Didn't want to finish like that. A mm. little bit straight. That was not easy because he had to go past the line of the three to get back to the two and the one, so that was a touchy shot. I mean, got a little straight on the three, but... Actually, that's not easy. It's, it's funny, actually, because you really want to get rid of the one, two before you go up table. Yeah, played it well. Yeah. I squeezed an angle out of it with the top right spin. I mean, it looked easy on there. He made that look very yeah. easy, but when you're bridging over a ball like that, it just makes everything much harder. Right, we probably will stay below this, the five ball here, catching this line go one rail towards the the 13 ball yeah you just if, saw you yeah. saw him tap his cue on the table right where the cue ball's heading now actually even if it was higher on the two ball he could have just bumped the one towards the pocket also yeah he has the option to play the one before the two, even if he didn't expect that to happen. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, that was a pretty thin cut, actually. But still, it's a bad miss. Yeah. Bad miss. Yeah. Unexpected, but... <coughs> then the 12 ball is a problem, and he has to make sure he get rid of it as soon as possible. Maybe playing the 13 on the side and go two rails around to play the 12 ball on the same side pocket. That could be an option. Or you think you might play the 12 and the two in the same pocket? No, I don't think it's just yeah. too much risk involved. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, nothing is connected to the twelve. No, but he definitely needed that thirteen out of the way just to give a path for the twelve into the side. When these two balls are taken care of, the twelve will go into this side, as we're looking now, the the bottom one. Mm -hmm the pocket that he's playing this 11 ball into yeah so just looking for a nice angle that looked perfect he's come in behind the 12 playing for either side or corner
coming underneath the eight ball. Using that spin just to just needs it to go a little bit. If he's straight on this, he's well it works. Yeah, it was just off straight, so that will work. Mm. So a loose two ball from Shane gives Alvin the chance to run the rack. And he comes back to 5-3. We're just going to take a short break. We'll be right back. And we we're back at it. SVB leading five games to three. Anyway, an unexpected miss on the two ball on the previous rack gave Albin an opportunity to, to come back in this match. He moved, he moved to the center. See if you had good results with this break. That was not a square hit. It lost a little bit of the cue ball there, but he got away with it. Yeah, 15 ball. I think it was. Yeah. <coughs> was the 12 ball disappeared, so. Well. With a five ball there, it looks like solids are the set he's going for. Yeah. Going to play for this seven ball in the side, take care of the top half of the table, and then four solids all in the same half alongside the eight. meaning that his cue ball doesn't have to travel far. Yeah, also the seven ball is passing in the top right corner pocket, so maybe he decides to, to go for it later. Maybe to keep it as the last ball of the group. Once you get rid of the three, then the eight ball will pass. a little high on this three so he's playing for the two first slide in between the 14 and the four to leave the four in the opposite corner and up for the seven ball as his last ball 
Um, Just let that one slide. Yeah, and it is in a tough spot because now it has to queue over the 15 and the 8. Yeah, that's loose, loose play for me, that. Should be nowhere near that 8 ball. And I don't know if he will be able to get to the 7. It's hard to tell, he may have to just drop this. Drop it in, dead weight, and leave a long seven. So the cue ball actually under, below the, the green 14 there as you're looking. Wow, this is tough. And the shot clock is coming into play. Wow. Maybe he blocked the eight ball yeah. with the 14. Yeah. We can't see from there, but that can happen. Yeah, definitely blocked, so. Yeah. So now he's in big trouble. He's a big draw shot. Oh, he miscued. He's miscued. A couple of mistakes here and there from both players. Good shot, not to be in a hurry. He wants ball in hand on the 15 ball, looks like, to get rid of the 15, 14, and give some space to the eight, which he has now. He didn't get ball in hand, but still. He had one he wanted. Yeah, he's got con total control of this rack. Probably going to play for the uh, orange in the side. Or maybe not now. I just thought if he... Yeah. <laughs> just shaking his head. Yeah. If he finishes straight on the orange strike and then just rolls over to the rail for the, for the nine ball. He's going to play safe again yeah. to make sure you run this rack properly. Yeah, that's a good one. It doesn't have to be in a hurry. This is the thing, he's in total control. Once you've only got one ball on the table, <laughs> you know, you're, and you're not shooting at it, you're up against it. He called the seven ball into the corner. Possible. Oh, he's miscued, oh, miscued again. again. Actually, that was a good call because going three rails and hitting oh. the right side of the, the, the seven ball off the eight could have gone in the top right corner pocket. Two miscues in one rack. Yeah. That's rare. Yeah. The thirteen ball is still funny in this position. to go two rails here follow two rails to make sure he has the right angle oh no he's going okay I didn't see the angle he has from there
So another gift. This yeah. time from Albin. Looked like he was in total control. Running the balls out and just left himself hampered over that eight ball. Yeah. And it's Shane Van Bonen that takes that three rack lead again. Might be happy with this because we wouldn't expect him at the table in this rack. Two world nine ball titles for Albin. Ocean here. And one for Shane Van Boning. Two of the greatest players ever played the game. Couple of mistakes from each of the players though. And here we go, a dry break again. Oh no, we made the one ball on the side, sorry. Yeah, he made the one ball, controlled no, the two ball as well. That was a previous break. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that was the break where we made four ball on the breaks. Upstairs, just trying to trick us there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Albin is given an another opportunity here to try to tie up the match. Still has some work with the three ball here. Seven ball passes in the side, so he has to go and pick up that three which is blocked by the nine. Looks like he's straight in on looks, the one. Yeah, looks pretty straight. He would have liked to to take that three out of the equation right now, but yeah. I think he was hoping for the angle so that he could go down for the three, then the seven, then the five and six. Yeah. But like you said earlier, sometimes you just don't land on a ball nicely. You just got to change your plan of attack. He's on the three, just. <coughs> yep, just looking where he wants to be on this seven, so he can just slide up for the eight. He played a kind of a zone here where we could reach the three and the seven with an intentional purpose to play the three first, then he has it, so everything's okay. So it's Shane Van Brown in dry break. Gives Albin an opportunity. 
pull one back, which he does, and it's now 6-4, Van Boning. Albin to break. of other scores for you. Defending champion Sanchez Ruiz is 6-3 up on Mika Imanen. Nayuki Oi, Japan 8-2 in front. Mustafa Alna. Eklant Kachi. 8-2 in front on David Alcady. Joshua Filler, 9-1 in front against Matthias Snagoki of Poland. May I run a few racks? side that was a powerful break pretty square hit yeah, and the solids look well, nothing's ever straightforward but as near as you could get yeah fortunately the isolated ball which was the three you can get rid of it early so Actually, the, the three balls in the up table would be easily cleared. He has to decide whether he play the six. Now, I think the four is a little too low to be played in the on the side pocket, so he might get rid of the seven before taking a shot at the four. I mean, everything is open, so shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, and six of the seven stripes are in the other half of the table, so there's not much traffic either to contend with. Extension. Just in two minds here. I think the reason is because, well, obviously he'd like to play the four into the same pocket where the seven is, but the seven's in the way, so he's just, just double checking. I think he got himself pretty flat on that seven ball. One well into the center of the table, I feel. Yeah. Just got enough to play the four ball. Nice draw shot back out for the eight and Just, just stretching because of the balls there. And there's two stripes. Just doesn't want to make a foul. So it puts the extension on the cue. And that extension, the weight of the cue has just meant that the cue balls got away from him slightly. Still shouldn't be a problem. Struck. 
crowd like that one. So Albin comes back. Now trails Shane six to five with the break. We didn't see many break and runs here. That was one of the first. Yeah, even though they're breaking them well, there's been a fair few dry ones, so... Yeah, and a few funny layouts. There has, yeah. Thomas Kaplan is 8-3 in front against Tyler Steyer of the United States. You also have Fedogorst in the in the bracket. Playing Ma Mark Beisterbosch. I can see them, I don't know what the score is. It looks like it's six two to Fedor yeah. in that match. Albin straight down the middle. Wow, that was a big pop. The four railer goes. I think it was the four railer, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> Into the traffic. That's yeah, it's always <laughs> funny to <laughs> see Avoided that. everything, yeah. yeah. Okay, we have the 13 and one glued. But the 14 can uh, easily be used to go into the problem and stay on the 9. So it shouldn't be a problem there. Mm. I think it's a little flat on the 14 though, but... Just got enough angle, I think, just to yeah. punch it out. Big target with the 1 and the 13, so... It works nicely. So now I'd like to use the 11 ball as the last ball, maybe on the side to the 8. change his mind though or maybe he didn't have that in mind at all but now it has to shoot the 11 and maybe natural angle to go to the 10 yeah looks pretty good nice angle come back across Yeah, but then he has to be pretty straight on the on the 13 to go back to the 8 because the the 5 is blocking the the bottom right and corner pocket so you really need a a flat angle on that uh, you really need a flat angle on that 13 yeah straight or short for this I actually played for oh, the side okay. so Yeah, the zone was a little bigger here because it's not really online, but it's still okay. A little bit of inside and would do the job. And it goes, and just like that, we're tied at 6-6. Six, six.
jump into break again. Last break was a monster break. Can he repeat that? Uh, if you get into some kind of a rhythm, then he could run a few racks here. Wow. That was a big break. Yeah. Right on the nose. Makes the five, which was the front front ball in the side. Or oh, the one behind the front ball, beg your pardon. Big break here. Yeah. Big pop. The impact sends directly the cue ball to the head strings. So. Table is wide open, and after you get rid of that 10 and the 12, you can go up table to. Balls are all connected. The 9 is connected to the 11 on the side, and the 15 is connected to the 13. Still, I don't think the 8 ball passes the 6. So maybe that's the only, the only issue here for has been ocean <coughs> yeah it's going to play two rails here to ca to try to catch the line of the nine i guess Shouldn't be a problem here. The only thing is to go from the 13 to the 8. That's still okay, I mean. Even if the eight doesn't go past that green six, it, it does go into every other pocket. So any sort of angle on this 13 ball, that looks perfect. So I'll just slide this two rails and leave the eight ball in the corner. Looks perfect. And one of the first time in that match, he takes the lead. Yeah. Seven games to six. Really got the momentum now. We're just going to take a short break. We'll be back in two minutes.
we're back at it. Albinusian is taking the lead seven games to six and has been breaking really hard the last two racks. I think it's two break and runs. Yeah, two break and runs hard and straight as a die, right on the nose. If you can repeat it, then SVB is in trouble. Yeah, pretty good hit, you know, although it, it didn't work right in the nose, but pretty good spread, powerful break. The 14 ball is in a tricky position if he decides to go for the stripes, but... And if he goes for solid, obviously the seventh ball would lead him to the eight. Yes, yeah, solid just needs the six ball move so that the one ball passes. Oh, I thought it would go the other way on the three ball to go two rails behind to try to catch the six, but I think he just came up a little bit short. I think he might have been playing for the five ball. You know? Ah, okay. And then get rid of the six? Yeah. Okay. So now that's not on. So then again we reassess. Yeah. And I think he's in trouble because he, ha he has a slightly angle on the three which leads him to the stripe, I think it's the 10, if he draws back, so... It's funny here. Yeah, he's definitely got some angle on this three, so if he can follow it through off two rails... He may be able to reach the five. Well, I'm thinking if he comes somewhere near the, the orange yeah. 13, which needs to go past, and he's short. Wow, he's in trouble. Yeah. Half a ball roll and he was perfect. Yeah. It's good for the show, but it's not good for him. Yeah, he might be able to make it though, but then the problem is he's gonna lost a little bit of the cue ball here. Maybe running into the 14. Wow, struck it well. Struck it too well and got the draw. So far from over this one. I didn't think it was that straight on the five. Yeah, he did, he did make the five into the left yeah. side of the pocket, so. Wow, that's a hell of a shot. Especially with five nicely. seconds, yeah. Oh, he's trying. Yeah, the, the clocks uh, yeah. come into play there. He already took his extension, and so we didn't have yep. much time to... He's finished dead straight on this 14-stripe chain, so... Nice starter as well. Hmm. Shane's been sat in his seat for two and a half racks. He's watched his 6 3 lead disappear and. Opportunity to tie up the match, so. on the side I don't think so I think in either corner pocket yeah go to the side rail with the last stripe yeah it looks a bit tight for the side so
just bump this cue ball out, make sure he's got some angle on that 15 ball. Straight across the table. And straight in eight to make it seven, seven. Here we are, race to three. Looks like Albinusian is taking a timeout. So, for that reason, we'll have a short break and we'll be right back. So, Albin back in the arena and we're ready to go. 7-7, seven, seven. Shane Van Bone into break. And we really don't know what's going to happen here. The outcome of this match is really suspenseful. Pretty solid hit here. I think he's made two ball. Yeah, slight cut break there. 
looks like the sol the the stripes are on. If he's trade on if he's trading on the fourteen, then he could get rid of the thirteen right now. That could be great. Yes, it is. And now the 10 ball is giving him the 12 and the 9. So everything is set up here for a run out. I think he wants to play the 10 and the 12 first. But. Oh, he's looking to try to catch the 15 line if he can, I mean, playing a zone position where he could play the 12, either the 12 or the 15 if he has it. Yeah, I think he's playing to leave the 15 last. Or maybe not now. Let's yeah. see. Yeah, he has it, so he's going to get it's rid of it. Yeah. 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 Because it's, it's a tricky ball, actually, here behind 3 and 7. So now that he can yeah. clear it, he has the 10, which is a crucial ball that, that is connected to the two balls to the side pocket, so... Yeah, if he'd have finished straight on it, he would have probably left it, but because he had the angle to come out for the 10, it, it was perfect. Drop this nine in. Didn't travel that much with the cue ball, choosing to play the, the 12 in the opposite top left. break and run this time from Shane Van Bonin and he leads 8-7 really getting down to the crunch part of this match now Wow, that was a square hit. That was cue ball control, I guess. Again, wide open table. If the 11 ball passes the 13, from here it's tough to say, it's close. But Also the stripes are clean. Also the the solids are clear. Yeah, both in fairly open positions. The only thing that is tricky is the seven one for the solids and the eleven thirteen for the stripes if it if the eleven don't pass. Yeah, he's 
getting on the 13 ball sooner rather than later to open the path for the 11. Looks like you can just draw it straight back. Could be good to get rid of the 15 right now because the 10 don't pass the 15 on the side. You really want to be. He really wants to be perfect on making sure he's running out this rack. Tell you what, that was good cue ball control to be able to be on the, on this right side of the 15 on the side. Kind of a touchy shot on the 11 and then is really perfect taking a two-game lead and being on the hill. Yeah, another nice break and run from Shane. So now, got that two rack cushion and on the hill and breaking, so. Odds are good for Shane. Yeah question is can he make a ball if he keeps breaking full on like he did that last one it's hard yeah. not, not to see him making a ball and he's keen to go he's up and ready A little bit off to the right. Yeah, plenty of power, but just lost the accuracy. Yeah. So it doesn't make a ball. You see losing the cue ball across the front of the pack. Straightforward. You see, all the solids seem to come and surround the eight ball. So that'd be an issue if you took the stripes. Yeah. And the four ball is isolated and is in a tough position to get on. So, not an easy task here. Yeah, the stripes look to be in a better. Have yeah. a better layout, but it's going to use maybe the 14 to try to to move those solids that are surrounding the eight, yeah. and keep the 12 as an insurance ball on the side. I guess. I think is the 11 is blocked by the three also. Yeah, and the four into the other corner down that rail mm. so 
Yeah, plenty of work to do here. Yeah. She just finished with a little bit too much angle on the green 14. So now he's looking at using this 12 ball. Just bumping that 11 out. Nice shot, but he's still got the issue, and it's a major issue, of the eight ball being tied. Yeah. And if he plays the 15 now, he's going towards the four. No, we can avoid the four going one rail to the two stripes are up table. Yeah, I like that. Maybe now he has the angle he wanted on the 14 to go into the eight, at least seven, eight. Yeah, that's the reason he's playing it now, because he's got a perfect angle. Yeah. Good stun here. Oh, okay. Wow. That's that's a good stroke here. Wasn't happy with just moving one of the yeah. solids. He wanted to move all four. <laughs> he wanted to make sure that the eight ball was really clear. Well, he's definitely done that. between the five and the seven now to get on the is it the it's the 13, 13 yeah. yeah this is well done we have an ocean here still got to be careful even now because it's a little flat and yeah he finished straighter than he intended and maybe he has to go two rails to play the eight ball on the other side where the three ball is. And by doing so, he is going to cross the line of the eight, coming this way instead of, I don't know. He yeah, needs good pace control. Yeah. This That's looks nice. Yeah. He controlled the speed of that one really good. When you come crossing lines, then speed-wise, it's tough. Did it perfect. Okay, and from that dry break from SVB, Albin is still trailing, but he's been breaking good also in this match, so. Can he push SVB to a hill hill thriller? Again, he broke a little bit off to the left. And so maybe good action into the ball though, but not really a square hit. That was a good break, but not good result. Okay, the nine ball is locked. If you choose to go stripes, but he has room to play the combination and go it right now. I mean, he can even make himself more comfortable playing the 13 right now. 
But then he, he takes off an insurance ball. Yeah, when he does bump into the nine. He doesn't have the 13, though. And I don't know if he has a shot. Do you think that the 15 passes the 6? It looks like it, but I, I think he might still be able to make the 13. Oh, yeah, you think so? Yeah, it's close. He stood behind. The, yeah, he's, there you can see. He can just play it with right hand spin. That's a good point. See the cue ball spin. Looking if he could come round the back, round the back of the eight and the six ball, or the nine in the side. Looks pretty good. Just above the the nine. No, he's going to play the nine and the touch of left back to center of the table. the 11 the red 11 and then the 10 ball I think the 8 ball passed either in both corners both yeah. corners pocket so but I think ideally just draw this back a few inch yep that'll work a little bit straight on it Going to draw back to the side rail, what do you think? Yeah, that's the only shot on. Yeah. Just gotta miss these two. Let's play this delightful. Wow, that's perfect. So this eight ball for the match. And the place into the last sixteen of the tournament. And in it goes. Yeah. So it's a 10-8 win, Shane Van Boning over Albin Ausham. And we we'll see him in the last 16. It was Daryl Pitch and myself, Benjamin Blassen, for the commentary. And I wish you a very pleasant night. I will see you tomorrow for the juniors and the women. Bye.